Let's make another one of these. But bigger and brighter. Welcome to the Mackie Makerspace. Oh, excuse me. Hi, I am Brother Bob Mackey. I am the curator of meteorites at the Vatican Observatory. And lately, we have been working on a giant HO scale model of the Church of St. Ignatius in Rome to display in the same church over the Jubilee year 2025. Now, this model is going to show off the observatory of Father Angelo Secchi, where in the 19th century, he pioneered several fields of astrophysics. So in this part of the series, we're going to be working on the observatory complex on the roof, and we're going to install a whole bunch of lights to light up the whole thing real bright. So there is still a lot to do, and the clock is ticking, so let's get started. So last time we built Seki's offices in the left side transept, I want you to be able to look in the windows and see inside, so that means putting lights inside, or else it's going to be too dark to see anything. So I'm going to mount the lights to the ceiling of various rooms. These ceiling panels are going to be cut from pieces of styrene. I like cutting styrene in rectangles. It's so easy and satisfying to score the sheets with a sharp blade and to just snap the piece in twice. To run the light through the ceiling, I'm going to drill some small holes in the center. As small as that hole is, it's actually quite larger than necessary for the LEDs that I'm going to use. There's a whole bunch of rooms in this complex, and they included Seki's office, the library, and the lab for the meteorographer, which I'm going to talk about later, and a few other rooms. I found these tiny little LEDs on Amazon and they're going to be perfect for the lights in the offices at the observatory. And they are so small that it's hard to see them even off camera, but they are actually quite bright. And I'm already thinking of some great things that I can do with them in future projects, so stay tuned for those. But no video involving LEDs is complete without some bad soldering footage, nice and blurry and out of focus. But some shrink tubing will hide those bad solder blubs, and that makes it all okay. Nobody will ever know. And that's also why I film it out of focus, so you don't have to see the ugly solder jump. Yeah, that's the reason. It has nothing to do with the way my iPhone decides what to focus on. Really. <laughs> Check this out. You can see the LED glowing even through the ceiling panel. And it lights up the room quite nicely. Okay, so now it's time to wire up all the lights in the offices. I'm using a breadboard to connect it all up to power so that I can easily do maintenance or make modifications later if I have to. Quick test. Nice. Now that the lights are done, let's go ahead and paint this thing. So I'm getting a jump start on painting this transept because all the interiors of the offices are gonna need to be painted anyway. And the furniture has to be installed before I can complete the assembly. So I might as well paint the whole piece now. And the next step is a bit of masking before painting the exterior. Get in there, get in there. A bit of gray primer on the exterior before the paint job. I did a few tests on this scrap piece to figure out how I wanted to paint the exterior. It's always a good idea to test things before you commit. If only I could remember that more often. What I came up with is this. First, I need to hide the print lines so a thick layer of white acrylic paint is going to fill in the gaps. And then I add a second layer of stippled white paint to give it a rough texture. Now the airbrush is gonna come in handy. The entire exterior gets painted with Vallejo Middlestone color. Mm -hmm. 
And next, a light layer of white is gonna lighten the color a bit and gray it out some. It's hard to see on camera, but it actually makes a huge difference in person. Then this exposed brickwork gets a slightly reddish brown. By the way, the colors aren't going to be a great match for the real thing, but it is slightly better than the stuff I did on the original church model I made a few years back. Now for the best part, removing the masking tape. Very satisfying. This thing's gonna need windows. I used the resin printer to make these window frames and now they get painted a nice brown. And to secure them in place, I'm using classic school glue. You might wonder why I'm not using model glue or something like that, but the school glue dries clear and won't smear the paint. So it's actually great for securing small pieces that have already been painted. If you haven't already painted the piece, though, the glue might blob up and mess up the paint job. A little sheet of clear plastic will serve as window glass. The big transept window under the office and above the side altar where St. John Berkman's is entombed was printed from clear resin. It's more translucent than clear, so light passes through, but you can't really see in. Anyway, after painting the metal grill work on it, it gets glued into the opening on the transept wall. Nice fit. Now to prep and paint the office rooms. I'll give them a basic white interior. <coughs> Just a few fumes to clear out. The floors get a layer of dull gray for a bit of contrast from the walls. These squares here are picture frames. I mean, you gotta have some random stuff decorating the walls. I printed these images based on Secchi's own work, both on solar physics and stellar classification. Focus, focus. I'll paste them to a plastic sheet for a bit of strength before putting them in the frame. A few dollops of school glue will secure them to the walls. That looks great! This one is Secchi's scheme for classifying stars based on their spectral lines. He classified about 4,000 stars with this method, which served as the basis for the later classification scheme that we still use today. Now for a few knickknacks and furniture. I don't have any actual reference for the contents of the offices, so I just picked out a few representative pieces and printed them in resin. This one is an armillary sphere, a classic model of the sky. This is the Meteorografo, Secchi's invention for measuring and recording weather data. I did actually have photographic reference for it since it's currently on display at the observatory in Monte Porcio. Now it's not fully detailed here because you'll just barely be able to see it anyway. And no observatory is complete without several clocks scattered around. It's always important to know what time it is. Okay, now let's fill the offices with all this furniture. Here's a random telescope so that you'll know it's part of the observatory complex. <laughs> 
Here's the meteorographer, fully painted. I think it came out pretty good. It goes in this back room because at least according to one document I found, that's where it actually was. I had to place it carefully to make sure that it could still be visible through both the window and the door. For the library, there's this shelf full of books. I imagine that it probably was set up a bit different from this, but this is definitely going to communicate the purpose of that room. And now for Seki's office. I'll put the armillary sphere in there as well as a desk and a few chairs. Now that the offices are all painted and furnished, they can finally be glued in place permanently. Now off camera, I painted this little balcony that connects to Seki's office. So here he could come outside and look and see the sky to see if things were clear enough to do some astronomy. Now that the offices are done, we can turn to the observatory. Finally, I printed the complex here in three main pieces like this one. This is the main observatory structure, which housed a 24 centimeter diameter, 4.3 meter long Mertz refractor telescope to which Seki mounted a prism to observe the spectra of stars. Removing the supports is another relaxing, satisfying activity. The interior is going to be painted much like the offices. You'll be able to peek into the dome when it's completed. Plus, the white paint will make the interior brighter to better see the telescope. At the top of the stairs, there's a bust of Pope Pius IX, who founded the observatory complex. It'll only be visible if you peek in at exactly the right angle through one of the windows, but I wanted to include it anyway. Underneath the Mertz is the solid base, which connects it directly to one of the giant columns that were intended to support the giant dome that was originally planned for the church, but was never built. This gives the telescope a very stable support that prevents movement and vibrations during sensitive measurements. If you're planning to do spectroscopy or astrophotography, which Seki also dabbled in, you can't be having the scope shift around in the wind or whatever, even just a tiny bit. This little round window I printed from resin fits in the oval-shaped opening in the stairwell shaft. And then I'll have to install it before placing the stairs. This spiral staircase is another feature that would be just barely visible through the windows, but I wanted to include it anyway. This is how you get to the Mertz Dome from the rest of the complex. A little airbrushing will give the floor of the Mertz Dome a nice even gray. And don't worry about the slightly messy edges. It'll get covered up later. When I designed the dome, I planned for four LEDs to light it up. There are little holes in the walls of the structure that run the wires, so they're going to be well hidden. Now, if you're an actual astronomer, you're probably yelling at the screen that bright lights in an observatory dome are sacrilege. Well, if this were an actual observatory instead of a model, I would say you're right. However, the whole point of building this model in the first place is to educate people about the observatory on top of this church. So people need to be able to see it, and the only way to ensure that people notice the telescope is to light it up bright as the sun. Ah. 
Now that the glue is dry, let's run the wires through the lower base and assemble the two parts together. And with the wires run and the pieces affixed, I can solder up the wiring and secure the wires in these channels so they won't get squinched or pulled. And you've seen me do the breadboard stuff before, so I'll just be speeding through this. That's looking pretty nice. I also wired lights into the rest of the complex. Here's a quick test to the whole assembly. Brilliant! More bad soldering. That must mean even more lights. This time we're doing the internal lights for the main part of the church. Now, you won't be able to look inside the church, so I don't need to get too fancy about this. I just want light to shine through the various windows, which will all be printed from translucent resin. Also, I've got larger, more traditional LEDs for this job. Because I accidentally ordered a mix of colors, some are white and some are going to be a warm yellow, but I think that's actually going to add some visual interest to the project. Just like with the offices, they're all going to be wired to breadboards. For completeness, I'll add the right side transept where the geomagnetism lab was, and which will also be lit by a couple of these LEDs. A quick test to make sure I wired it all right. Okay, it works. Off camera, I put it all into the interior of the church. Sorry I didn't film it, it was hard enough just getting it all in there. And uh, don't pay any attention to my super awesome wire management skills. It's not like anyone will ever see it once the structure is closed up. Now let's turn our attention to the roof. I printed roof tiles in resin and they're gonna be glued to PLA printed plates to give them more structure. But wait, there's a little problem. They're a little bit warped. This happens sometimes with resin. If I hit them with a bit of heat and then put down some light reading from my personal library, that ought to take care of it. Now we can glue it onto the PLA panel properly. And a bit more light reading should secure the two pieces together. For the offices, the roof panels will just go straight on top of the office rooms, but for the other sections of the church, a framework is needed to support the structure. So here I'm gluing up some rafters to span the nave. And once assembled, the tile sheets can get glued on. And then rinse and repeat for the other roof tiles on the other parts of the church. And I'm not gonna bore you with all of this. Uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that I forgot to film it. Nope, not at all. So now it's time for the roof pieces to go in place. It's kind of a bit of a jigsaw puzzle with each piece needing to go on in the exact right order so they can all fit together. I tried to set it up so the roof can be easily removed for maintenance, but in the end there's going to be a few small pieces, like this one, that will have to be glued down and will get in the way of any disassembly. So that's going to conclude this part of the project. We still need to finish the paint job and do a few important details like, um, uh, oh, oh yeah, the telescopes. And that will be all covered in the next and hopefully final installment of this series. Please like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll be informed when that video and other future videos drop. 
The material cost for this project was supported by the Church of St. Ignatius in Rome. This channel is not sponsored by the Vatican Observatory, but I do make use of their facilities and resources for video editing. The purpose of the Vatican Observatory is to be a sign to the world of the compatibility of faith and science and of the Church's support of science, and it could use your support. If you would like to support the work of the Vatican Observatory, or even just learn a little bit more about it, there is a link in the description. Please check it out. And until the next video, peace.